All right, and so if we turn to Matthew 25, verse 14. Okay, um, there is a lot of verses. Okay, are we familiar? Okay, are we familiar with this um this parable? Okay, let's read 14 to 21. And then we break it down, and then we read the rest, and then we break it down, yeah. So and then you want to read 14 to 21. Okay. For the kingdom of heaven, so this is Matthew 25, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Okay, then. So what we have here. So we have a man, yeah? And it says in verse 14, he's going to a far country. For whatever reason. So he's traveling to a far country. And he calls his servants and delivers unto them. So verse, verse 14, what does he give to his servants? His goods. So, hold on. Oh, yeah, so let's first, it says the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is is like. So when it says that the kingdom of heaven is like, what is that? What is that telling us? What is Jesus is giving this parable? What is Jesus about to tell us? He's comparing. Two things. Yeah. So it says the kingdom of heaven is like all of this now, yeah? Is it like? Mm -hmm. Is as. Which is that what you said? The kingdom of heaven is as a man. Oh, shame. So it's <laughs> as a man. So what does that mean, as a man? This is as this whole scenario yeah so to understand this this is as this it's still comparison it's still comparing it's still comparing yeah so christ is about to tell us what the kingdom of heaven is like so it's going to give this story so in order for you to understand what the kingdom of heaven is like he's saying Listen to this story. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. So it's as a man traveling to, into a far country, he called his servants and he gives them, he delivers them goods. So what does what does what does um, the man have? According to verse 14. What is the question? What does what, the man have? Yeah. I mean, what does he... Oh, he has goods. He has goods. 
Well, who does he give the gods to? His servants. So he's got servants, yeah? Yeah. He's got servants. Now, servant is, you can say, someone who works for somebody. So these people work. Um, the people who, the people who work for the man, yeah. And he gives them. He gives them goods. So they receive goods. Yeah. And so verse 15, let's break down verse 15. So he wants to break down verse 15. He wants, he wants to go. I want some volunteers. What does what does um, this man start to do now? With his servants. He gives the the goods um to his serv to their servants. So one of them gets five talents. So one servant he gets gets five talents. So he comes asking for the money. I want every time someone speaks, it's someone else comes. Oh, one moment, Max. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. Um, Tom. Tom, how do you make someone a spotlight? Um, I think you, I, I think you either go to participants, right click on whoever it is and make spotlight, or you can, I think you can do it on the video at the top, but make sure to use add spotlight, not pin. Because I think when you pin, it's just yourself. But when you add spotlights for everybody. Uh, can I do it on mine? Because I'm host now. Can I... Yeah, if, if you're host, you can do it. No, it's not me. Okay, spotlight for everyone. Yeah, right. have you done it? Testing? Yeah, it's working now. Is that working? So I'm, 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 talk, I'm talking, it's not changing. Yeah, so if you could do that, and you know, whenever you're, you're presenting, just okay. to stop it. Yeah. Thank you. So Magda, what you what were you saying about these five talents? Yes, so they will be given to his okay. servants. Yeah. So one servant get, gets five talents. Yeah. Another gets two. And another gets one. And they, then it says every man according to his se several abilities. So each of them having some abilities. Okay. So what you're saying is each one of these men uh -huh. have an ability. Uh-huh. And this man, this man the, knows the, about it. This man knows about the ability. Uh huh. So, can I put given according to the ability? ability? Mm -hmm. So, they're given talents according to the ability, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, one, this third man is only a because of his ability, he gets one. Mm -hmm. The same with the second man, he gets two. 
And with mm -hmm. the first man, he, he gets five talents. So this man here, he has more ability, yeah? He's, he's more mm -hmm. capable of doing whatever he needs to do. So that's why he gets five talents. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then it says that he straight away went for his journey. So then, so when he does this, so this is first then, yeah, so he does this, and then he said what? What, does, what happens? Uh, so, and straight away took his journey, so he left straight away. So it gives, it calls his servants, it gives them these goods or what 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 are, what are the goods also goods known or as? talents? So now they're called talents. Yeah. So from goods to talents, and it go, it it does this. It gives them the talents, and then it sets off on his journey to this world. Mm -hmm. So that's all we know so far about the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. So we'll just continue painting the picture. So verse, so he wants to he wants to break down verse 16. He wants to go into it. What does the what does the man with the five talents do? Is Debbie here? See you, um, Verse 16. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same. So the first one who received the five talents, he went and, and traded. Interesting that they got trade there. <laughs> We, it's the same now, eh? and he made five, made them other five talents. So he had five talents, and he got extra five talents with trading. So this man, he trades. Yeah. And then what did you say? And he got five talents for his five talents. So he so, got extra five. Yeah. So total, he's got ten altogether. Ten talents, yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's doubled his talents or his goods. Yes. Okay. Is that what else is in verse sixteen? Okay, verse seventeen. Then me again. Yeah. Okay, and likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. And so in this verse, it's telling us that the one who received two talents, he gained the extra two talents. Okay, so um, likewise. Yeah, the same as the one before. Okay, so basically it's a comparison, is it? Yeah. yeah. It does the same thing. Um, and he gets the same results. Yeah. So he's got four altogether. Why does he get four? And why does this man get ten? Why can't this man get... Um, <clears throat> why can't the first man get 15 or 20? Because the the men knew um, what talents, uh, what, how did you call it? Uh, what ability they had. Yeah, that's the word. Okay, so, so he, he knew what ability they had. Yeah. Okay then. So. Okay. So he used, are you saying he used 100% of his ability? Yes. He done all with his ability? 
Ego what, what, sorry? What he was what, what he was capable of doing, everything he was capable of doing, he done it. Yes. Likewise with the one that had two. Yes. So the works the best to the best of their ability. Amen. That's what exactly that's the question, yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, they did. Is that how it is, Emma? Well, I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming that they couldn't make more than double. <laughs> so they both make double. Because he's happy at the end, but I'm going ahead. Go on, yeah. The, the both make double. Yeah. Yeah, so what verse we in? Verse 17. Yeah. Verse 18. So we made extra five talents in verse 16. And in verse 17, the second person, he made two extra talents. Yeah. Um, so verse 18. Now, who do we have? The third man. Now the third man. What does the third man go and do? Just let's do some. Let's do some compare and comparison. No, compare and contrast with these three men. So the all servants, yeah. The all servants. Yes. But what's different? We, we all know the servants. That's what's similar. But what's different about them? Their abilities. Their abilities. What else? And what they receive. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um. So they're the same in one respect, but different because they get different talents, they have different abilities, but they're all working for this man, they're all, they're all servants for this man, but one can do more than, than, than the other, and one can do less than the other. So now, with that, compar with that compare and comparison there, how can we do a compare and comparison here with what to do with the talents? Sorry, can I um, ask a question? I don't know if, if I missed it. Um, so is, are the talents different to the ability, if that makes sense? Because they're given according to their ability. So it seems like they have the ability before they're given the talents. Does, does that question make sense? So do they have the ability and then they're given talents for, to use? Or is the talent the ability? So let's go back to verse... Let's go, let's go back to I verse 40. Yeah, Magda? I think it says later on in the verses. Okay, yeah, I think so. Well, let's go back to the previous verses to see if you missed anything. So, verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So, he calls his servants and it says he delivers to these servants goods. Yeah. So these servants, they receive goods. Yeah. And we're going to see how they're giving goods. Um, so they all receive the same thing. Yeah. They all receive the same thing. So. Yeah. I was going to ask, uh, did my question make sense? Yeah. In terms of like, is the, the talent, what they're given, is that the ability or is that separate to their ability? Does that make sense? So when we're thinking about applying it further down, maybe that distinction will help, will make us see things differently, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, so I'm looking at the answer. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's just go over what we've got, got so far to see if we can get the answer for you, what you're looking for. So, they receive goods, and in verse 15, it says these goods are talents. So they receive talents, yeah? So they receive, they receive a talent, they receive talents, um, maybe we've got to look into the strongs, what that talent, what that talent means, and the goods. Um, yeah, so, and, and unto one, he, he gave five talents to another two and to another one. So to every man, according to his several ability. So he gave this first man five talents. He's given this according to his ability. Now, what does that mean? Emma, I'm going to give you this, these gods or these talents according to your ability. So you got the ability to receive five. You got the ability to manage five talents. Mm -hmm. Because what does it do with the talents? They go and do something with the talents. What what they what they uh, receive, they go and do something with it. They multiply. So if this man is given five talents, he multiplies and it makes five extra talent or extra goods. Likewise with the second man and well, we haven't got to the third man. So is this man here, this third man, is he a, is he sorry, is this second man here? We see that they both double with what they got. They double up on what they got. So they both go trading. But one can one can only trade with two. Because it receives two, it says it receives two according to his ability. So it seems like he cannot work outside of his ability. So he cannot receive five because he's not able to manage two, three extra talents. Because he only is capable of, man of managing two. Does that make sense? Has it gone over your head? Yes. Yeah. So can this... this is and then we can tell them that the master knows the ability of the servants because how does he know to give five to the first one, two to the yeah. second one? Why does the master give one to this third man? Why not five? Because he's not able. Because he knows he's only got the ability. Yeah. So Tom's question is. Is the ability the talent? Brother Tom. Yeah, we asked me to clarify my question. Sorry? I'm asking you to answer the question, are you? To, uh, yeah, asking me to answer the question. Um, I mean, I think the reason why I was asking that question is because tra traditionally, I think um, the way I've approached this is that the talents is the ability. Um, and maybe that's approaching it from like a, a point of view where you've, um, you've kind of made an application. So I know we haven't made application yet, but then the way I've approached it before is that, okay, you're given five talents. That means you can do five different things, for example like that's the talent given to you that's not given to somebody else but rather i think though i'm understanding it now the way i'm reading it is that you the ability is separate to the talents so whatever your abilities are for example is is separate to the talent so i'm not trying to make an application of what the talents are but for example like talents could be opportunities rather than any things in and of themselves I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah. I don't, can I say something? I don't think Tom was here from the beginning where uh, I think Emma made a point of like, when we come to the study, uh, we have to put away what we think we know or any preconceived ideas or um, any application. So it's just reading what's there. 
What did you say about uh, the detective, uh, Emma? Well, the first chapter of the book, basically, it's called Don't Be a Know-It-All. And he yeah, talked about know it all. Yeah. coming with preconceived ideas of what we already think it means. And so then we can't investigate the case properly because we've already made up our minds about who did the crime. It's a, it's a detective thing. Um, so, but the, this, this is how to approach the Bible. You know, look at the evidence and not yeah. what you think is there, what you think is written. So if we go back to, yeah, the point you're making, that literal story, this man is giving his goods. When you look up goods, it's property or possessions, goods which are his substance to these servants according to their ability. So he knows these servants, they've got ability, and he gives them a certain amount according to, to what they can do with this business. And it says goes and trace. And that word talents is different from goods there. But I think that's just because it's going more detail that these talents are specifically a balance that is a certain weight of a coin or sum of money often. So it doesn't have to be money, but in this I, case, they're going and trading. So we, we can speculate it's money, but go on. I, I think later on in the verse, it's repeated and enlarged. And I think there is actually money. There is written exactly Lord's money. Yeah, I think so, you're right. So God's, yeah. you can get possession from talent. What did you say about talent? Um, a talent is a, a um, well, Strong's is a balance. That is a weight, coin or sum of money. So it's like a measure, an amount. So we, okay then. So the story is kind of unfolding as we go along. So what they do with the talents, what do they do with it? They go and trade them. So that's what they're going to do. Well, so this man gives them his goods the talents and what they do with this talent now what this man's giving them they go and do trading yeah so that's what they're doing that's that's all we've got so far that so so they increase the value of the talent yeah. yeah so first and the second man so far they go and do some trading with it whatever that looks like is that clear so far yeah So these five talents to get traded, they go do some trading with these five talents and then they earn an extra five, he earns an extra five talents. So now he's got 10 talents because of what he'd done with it. He doubled it, doubled the profit you can say. He's got extra. So now, yeah. But is that clear to Tom though? Um, Tom, you want to I think me? Daisy wrote there. I think Daisy wrote there to let finish Tom his point. Go ahead, brother Tom. Sorry, you got caught. Um, Can't see the Zoom. Um. Yeah. No. It. it I. Th I think maybe my question is deceptively simple, because it's. It, like I understand that the, the talents are money, I understand that all these things, but I'm just saying that I think the way I understood it before and you know, go back to see this point, I'm laying aside by preconceived ideas, is that um, the way I saw it was that it's almost like this person is given the money and given the ability at the same time, but they have the ability inherently and then they're given the, then they're given the talents because of their ability. I think I never made that distinction before. I thought, you know, so if you're given five talents, you're also given the ability at the same time, but it seems like the two are different. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think that was a question I was just asking, just making sure that I was like, oh, actually, when I read this, they're not given the ability. They have the ability and then they're given um, the talents. The, the, you know, it's I think it's a separate question to what, what the, you know, is it the talents money? Is it this? I think it's just the distinction between the talents and the ability. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a fair um, question. And I think yeah, I... just going over and like reading it slowly, um, sometimes going over it again and again, you begin to see something what you missed before, what you didn't see, why it wasn't so obvious um, when you first read it. So it's good to kind of go over these um, mm -hmm. verses. Yeah, uh, just looking at it now, it just again. Oh, Robert Curtis. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. <laughs> just popped in. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just 
that clarification came to me as well that these are two different variables but it seems that they are correlated somehow um, and you see them because uh, what you are given is dependent on what existed before but they two dis distinct things the talent that you have <laughs> sorry uh, the talent that you have and then what you're given right. I was just voicing so it could make sense in my head as well yeah, yeah. Um, and what's it say? You know, it's easy to get something wrong, you know. Um, if you just go back to verse 15, where it says, to every man, according to his ability, his several ability. Oh, several, mark that word as well, several ability. If you, if you just miss that, according to his several ability, you can go in a different direction. It's easy to just go in a different direction. It's so easy. Um, so it's just important to really take notes of what is being said. Mm -hmm. So cause and effect. Why is it given seven talents? I mean, five talents. Because of his ability. Yeah. It's given it's because or what he's able to do. Second man, he's given this because of his ability. The third man, because of his ability. He hasn't got much abilities compared to, if you compare this man to this man, this man has more abilities. Maybe when it comes to what, you know, the goods, what's been given to him, to the to, to these specific goods. What he, he can do more with these goods than this man here. So I've got, this man is fair. So they have to work according to their ability. Yeah, to the, to the best of their ability. Yeah. This man, this his work may look greater compared to him, compared to him. But they're both working to, or they all have to work to the best of their ability. So this man's sweat may look different to this man's sweat, but they're both sweating. Does that make sense? So, um, what did we leave her? Um, Sorry, so, so you're saying, um, basically, this man who's given two talents, the second one, he doubled his talents. So, mm -hmm. proportionally, it was the same as the one who's given five talents. But if, you, if he was given three talents, he wouldn't be able to do the doubling as much because he wouldn't have the ability for three talents initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's why it's so. If if it's given the although he doubled the same as the first guy, the the first guy doubled his five, but if you gave the second person who also doubled his, if you gave him four or five, with the same as number one, he would not be able to be as productive with it. Yeah, I think that's why I went back to the money. I was going to say, let's look at the literal and what it actually says. So yeah, I agree with what you're saying. It's, 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 he's got this ability. He's given this literal money to go and do something with according to his ability. Yeah, according to this innate ability that he already has that the, that the master knows of. So he's, yeah, he's treating them fairly because he's treating them individually that this one mm. can do this and this one can do that. Mm. Yeah. So he has to know his servants. Yeah. Basically, he has to know what, they, what they're capable of doing. But in order to make you know, go to a far country and leave his goods with these people. Yes to know them. So I just had another thought. You asked me, has oh. each person given 100% of their ability? I suppose I'm saying actually looking at the numbers if you if you took that in literal terms if someone had five and they invested five and they got five more then they've made a hundred percent on their investment you would say i think so in that sense you could read yes they gave a hundred percent or because they made a hundred percent yeah that's a good point You get that, yeah, everyone? Okay, 
Um, no, wait, what, what? Well, please repeat that, Emma. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm just saying, because he asked me before, I don't know if it's before you joined, Leon was saying, did, did each one of them put 100% of their ability into it? And I said, well, I'm assuming, well, I could say that, but I don't know if they could have made more than double, you know, because they made five. Why couldn't the one who got a five make 10 more? You know, is that the limit to what he could make? Is that the best of his ability? How do we know he used the best of his ability? And, and Leon used the phrase 100%. And I just thought, actually, if, if you make five more, you've got five, and you make five more, you've made 100% on your investment. So you could say, yeah, they've used 100% if you go by those figures. They both made 100% of, their, of what they had originally. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's go back to this third man. Verse 18. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. So what did this, what did this third man do? What does he have and what does he do? Brother Curtis. Hello. Hello. Yeah. What does, the, what does the third man do in verse 18? He went away, dug it in a hole, and hid the Lord's money. So I think that's a repeat and enlarge. Uh, yeah, basically went and hid the Lord's money that was given him. So... So he went and dig the hole. Dug. Dug the hole and he hid. I thought I was a... <laughs> he hid the lost money. So he went and hid it. He didn't so what what's, what difference do we see between these three men now? What is the difference? If we just compare them all, what can we see different? The last one didn't double his money. The other two did. The last one didn't double his money. Yeah. So. And using it. Yeah. And using compare and contrast, he didn't trade. So the opposite of, of um, so he hid the Lord's money in the ground. The others, it says, they traded. Well, the first one it traded, and the other one did likewise. So we know they both traded. And in contrast, this one digs a hole in the ground so he doesn't trade. So two trades, one digs. Oh, hides. So we've gone from goods to talents to money. Yeah, three things. It's described this thing, what they've received. So they've doubled. This man hides and digs. So he's not doing any trading. He's doing hiding. He's hiding the talent or the good or the money in the ground. For whatever reason. Um. So, so far, how many talents are gained total? What's the total amount of talents that's been gained by all these servants? If we do the maths. Eight talents. Eight have been gained. Ten, six. Is it is it all together with what they received and what they made? What they made, the profits. Just, just the profit. Yeah. Seven. Seven, yeah. And just by looking at this, these two trades, yeah. What was expected by the third one, could you say? 
what could we expect? Because verse 18, he says, but he, he didn't do any trading, but instead, he does something different. He goes and hides the money. So if he went and traded like the, the first two, what could we expect of him? Get another one back. We could, have, we could have got one back. So then we, this seven would have been an eight. So there's one less. Because this man decides to go and hide it, hide what is given. Okay, yeah. can I have a question? You have a question? Yeah. But maybe that's not what we're supposed to do, but I guess it's part of the methodology, but maybe it's not what we're supposed to do. Um, but sometimes I've realized that in Prime Minister's videos are that he's going through what the numbers mean. So for example, five means hand or power and 10 is test. Would that yeah. make sense to like to see what the numbers like um, mean? That will probably come in the application, maybe. Did you say that, Emma? The numbers, probably, yeah. Um, Wait some application, yeah. That will be application time. That's if I was making an application. Um, we won't be. Oh. Down at the numbers. One day, Sophie, it will be. One day. So, Sister Magda. Uh huh. Um, verse 19. So, the Lord. So, the Lord Back to verse 18. So now it's saying, so now it's, saying it's money that the Lord gave him. Yeah, so is it money? Is it talents? Or is it God's? Or was that mixed up? Or? It's money. So this money, so it's repeat and enlarge. So we see that the talents are money. And we see that he went he digged it in the earth, he digged in the earth and he did the Lord's money. So we see the man is Lord. Okay. Or could it be money and gods? I don't know. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Yeah. So it only mentions money on this third man. Yeah. But it says talents for the first two men. Yeah. And but in verse in verse um verse fourteen it says these three men received gods. Okay. So then I'm gonna challenge you because it says they received goods, but then verse six, fifteen says he gave five talents to one man, two talents to the other, and one talent. So they've all got the same thing, they've all got talent. Okay. He's got five, he's got two, and he's got one. So if his one is Lord's money, then it makes sense that the others are because they were all talents and they were all yeah, different amounts of money. So, so it's money. That's, yeah, what, that's what you said to begin with, so I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> now you're too. Okay then. I'm, I'm going to say that based on what Magda said about it being repeating and large. What do you think, Magda? It's just money. Is it money, Magda? Um, sorry, I missed the question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Leon's saying, okay, it, it's Lord's money for this one, but maybe the others got goods as well, or the goods are different. They had goods and money or something. And I'm saying, based on the fact that it uses the word talent for all of them, one got five talents, one got two talents, and one got one talent, then we're saying they've all got talents. So they've got different amounts of talent, but they've all got talents. Whatever the talents are, they've all got the same thing. And then he says, about this last man, he hid his Lord's money in the ground. So he's got, his talent is the Lord's money. 
therefore I'm saying all the others just have the Lord's money as well probably yeah but we don't know that for sure but probably I think so yeah 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 okay so you may unfold us and go along mm -hmm. so my the first 19 maybe someone else <laughs> <laughs> Who's here? It's because it's Tom Daisy. You're doing well, Meg, to carry on. No, no, hold up. Um, I'm so convinced you didn't. Was I summoned? Sorry. D Daisy. Okay. Oh, Curtis. So was that Curtis you put on his mic? Yeah. Okay then. You active and ready. Well, uh, what's the question? Don't matter. Don't matter what the question is. <laughs> <laughs> After a long time, verse nineteen. The Lord of those servants cometh, and reckon reckoneth with them. Um, reckon it. What does reckoneth mean? From the strongs. It means reckon, reckon, uh, to make up together. So to compute something. Okay. Okay. Or from Thayer's to take up together with another or others, to bring together with others. To cast, um, up. To cast up or settle accounts. Okay, the settle accounts sound good. Yeah, I I think that one sounds right. Um, yeah, yeah, I would go with that one. Um, to settle accounts. So after a long time, this man calls back from his far country to reckon up with them or settle accounts. Yeah. So it's it's give them something to do to do something with it. Yeah, so he's expecting them to do something with these talents. This is why they're given according to their ability and their servants for the working for him. So it's give them a work to do. Uh -huh. Um. So if you want to break down verse 20. Okay, so verse 20 says... Well, let me read it first, just so I can get her. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. So basically, the first person comes and says, Lord, you've given me this. I've done the work that um, you asked me to do. And this is what I'm bringing back. And I've doubled that which you gave me in the first place. Okay. So you're saying it's gained? Twice as much as you gave me. Gained twice as. So is this what this man's expecting? The Lord or the servant? The Lord. Um, I don't know. Why is it? Why? Why is his servants? When the Lord comes to him, why does the servant say, "Hey, I've gained twice as much as what you gave me"? Why is he telling him that? Good question. So. I think reasoning, just from the brief, small information that we have now, as you pointing out, you know, he has no need, need to disclose this if the Lord had just um, expected him to return with what he gave. But he gives this extra information like, listen, Lord, I've returned. Here's the five talents. Oh, and besides that, here's the double that I've done. So maybe perhaps the Lord wasn't expecting that doubling. So, I, go ahead. 
I think maybe he was expecting it. I think he, um, right. he knew the talent, uh, the ability of the people, and he expected them to use. I, I don't know. I think he probably expected. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yes, I agree there. He expected it. So this man lived up to the... Because uh, he, he, he knew their ability. He, I, I think, right. yeah, I don't know. By their ability, he knew what they were capable of. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this what this man wanted from his servants? Absolutely. You know, because why didn't the servant come out and say, ha, oh, I've been okay, I've been looking after myself, whatever. It comes and says, this is what I've done with what you're giving me. So the man has come to see what this man has done with the goods that he's given me to work with. Yeah, I think we can see that on the last one. So he got the talents and the Lord wanted the servants to use it. Uh, while we see that the last one, he hid it. And we see that it's not good. So I, I would say, yeah, he did expect to... This may... Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I finish? Yeah, go on, sorry. Go... No, please finish. I didn't want to interrupt you. I finished. You carry on. No, pl- no I'm joking. Um, <laughs> so this may be abstract, but if the servant who got five had come back and returned three, for example, um, would he have, would the uh, Lord been satisfied? Was he expecting, you know, double what I gave you? Or was he just respecting, expecting some return? Or, you know, do you get my question? Mm. No, I was asking, mm. yeah, Leon and everyone else. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was expecting double because he's, he gave to each one, each of his servants, we knew very well, their ability, and it says several ability. So I think the more he gave them, the more he expected back. So I think five was an amount that he probably expected back. Let's read verse 21, Cedric. Cedric, if you break down verse 21, you may answer. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. What does he get then? What's what's the the man's, the Lord's response to this man's work? He's, he's actually, he said, well done. So he's pleased with his servant. And he gets a well done. Servant. Sorry? He gets a well, well done. done. Thou good and faithful servant. So I come back and I see 10. I gave you five yeah. in the beginning, but now I see 10. Well yeah. done. What does he call him? Faithful servant. So this, this man is a faithful servant, yeah? So yeah. faithful with what? Faithful with the talents that he gave him. So this was expected then. Because he calls him faithful when he comes back with an extra five. So was mm-hmm. this extra five expected? Yes. Or can we not say that? So because this gets so well done. So what else is he called? What else does this Lord say? Uh, he says you will make him a ruler over many things. So first of all, it says you've been faithful over a few. Two things, yeah. Over a few, what what few? The few things that he gave him, like the, the few talents that he gave him. So this few is the five, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was faithful with his five talents. Yeah. So this man expected him to be faithful with his five, with this work, to go and do this trading and bring in some profit. Yes. So he knew his work and he had done his work according to his ability 
and he went and done that what was expected and he gets a well done yes he's a faithful servant yeah because he's faithful over what was given him just a few things what he gave him the five talents he was faithful over the five talents and then what else um he says he will make him a ruler over many things. So now, because of this, because of his faithfulness, what happens? In fact, he's, he's been made a ruler now over many things. He's a ruler. He will become over many, not few. Many, yeah. He's, he's going to be a ruler over many things mm -hmm. because he's faithful with a few. He's yeah. Become a ruler over many that he yeah. will become. Um, mm -hmm. And enter into the joy of the Lord. Right. Can I can I say something? Say. In regards to um, was this um, was this uh, was this, was isn't it is a man. Lord, is it man? Yeah. Um, yeah, the Lord. It says here. It says his Lord said it to him. Um, in terms of whether he was uh, expecting basically twice as much, um, I think by the response of the, the th and I know we haven't read it, but the response of the third, um, the, the third servant who just kind of dig this, his uh, talent and, and, and give it, and just give it back as it was. Um, it says here that, you know, um, he should have put his money to exchanges and that he would receive his own with usury. So he's like, look, if you had done that, then it would have been okay, if that makes sense. You know, if you'd put it to the exchanges. Um, so I'm not sure I could say, I don't know if you can get, as, as Sophie said there, when you invest and put things to exchanges, you don't usually get the, uh, twice as much return. I mean, you, you might if it's stocks, but usually trading, you don't really get that that much. Um, so I'm not sure it was ex like that. But the, the seven does also say like, you know, I know you're a hard and exacting taskmaster. What does it say? I think it says that, yeah. You know, you're, you're a hard man reaping where you, you have not sown, gathering where you have not strawed. So he does expect, he's definitely expecting something. But I'm not sure I can say he's expecting double. So they say, let's go to the man with five talents. He's got five of these, yeah. Can this be doubled? Yeah. Can this one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. So if it all can be doubled, what should you expect? Yeah, you, you know, I actually think because um, I think it, in the Bible it's not coincidence that it's twice doubles and upon two, the truth, the truth is established. Mm -hmm. So the third one supposed to do one and didn't. So, you know, I think if it wouldn't be meant double, it wouldn't be that twice. Yeah. So this, what was given was, was capable of, capable of being doubled. So if he didn't, if this man came out with three, what did he do with the two, two extras? Did he try to trade them? Did he just leave it? Did he give up on the third one? If it was, if this was capable of, if this was able to be traded, why was it? Why wasn't it traded? Did this? Would this? Would you say this man would have stopped doing his work and just ignored it, neglected it? I'm saying, what was given was able to be doubled. This is where you get so well done. Well, okay, it's um, hold. What does that mean? No, I was just uh, emphasizing, you know, that the 
first servant um, when he doubled his talent. So he didn't, um, how can I phrase it? He didn't just waste away like the last. He actually went on and did something with it. Yeah. So if he was only able to make three, that means just by the story, each servant was given according to his ability, several ability. If he can only trade three, that means would he be given five if he can't, if he can only manage three? Question to the class. Would the Lord give him five if the Lord knew that, okay, I know he can only manage three, but let me give him five. Uh, sorry, what was your question again? Would the, would the man or the Lord give the, per, the first man three talents instead of five if he, if he knew he can only manage three? Yeah, he would have. If he could only manage three, he would have just given him three. But he knew he could manage five, so he gave him five. So when he comes back and he sees five, yeah. extra more, five more, he's saying, well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying your logic is that if he'd only made three, God would have given him three. And that's not, not God, the Lord, the master would have given him three. So if he made three, that, would, that wouldn't have been enough. You're saying when he gave him five, he expects him to make five. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So if he expects this one talent, yeah, this, this third man with the one talent to make an extra talent, which he didn't, that means one talent is capable of being doubled. Because the second man, he doubles his, his, um, his money or his talents. Yeah. So is that, is that clear or is there any questions around that? Brother Tom. I'll rub it off. Um, yeah, I, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, although it, it's not that I disagree, but I don't really see this. I think we're operating on the fact that one talent can't be split into more, where, whereas I think a, a talent can. So it's, I think it's about like nine hundred dollars or something. So you you can get like an extra two two pieces of silver, and that will be an increase. But I I, I get your point. Yeah, I think the fact that we can we can say from this that to be faithful, he made five and he's called faithful, good and faithful servant and he gets the reward. So if we say this is the optimal, because if he'd made. OK, we could speculate he'd make more, but if he'd made less, he might not have been called faithful. All we do know is because he made five, he was faithful. So that means in my mind that he's been rewarded for his, using his ability to the best of his ability because the, the master is happy with him. He's not saying, well, actually, you could have made 10. Why didn't you? And he's not saying. It's only three or whatever. He's not He's not saying it's only five. The fact that he says it's faithful means that this man has done his best, I would have thought. And, and that implies that, yes, he was expecting him to make five. So he should have made five because that's what faithfulness, few equals five and faithful equals 10. You know, you've made five more. That's when he's called faithful and good and faithful now. I'm saying that's the best. Yeah. And that's the best. Yeah. Yeah. And his third man, he doesn't do the best. Based on the testimony of two, I like that testimony of two. Based on the testimony of two, what Sister Magda brought out. Is that they both did the best they could with what they had. And that's yeah. why they're both called faithful. Well, and we both one, see a double in both. Okay, you know what, we'll start there and we'll continue next week. Wow, is that it? Mm? <laughs> that went fast. <laughs> <laughs> that went fast, yeah. We'll continue. So that's just an exercise. Um, it was a good exercise. So if we just summarize what we have, does somebody want to summarize?
Uh, I don't, but can I add one more thing to the last verse we read? So, and and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, to, no, that's not it, one second. His Lord said unto him, well done, to good and faithful servant, who has been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. I think there could be also proof texting on this, that um, if you're faithful in little things, you can be faithful on more things. There is few stories in the Bible about this, and I don't know exactly where it is, though, but I know that could be done, the proof texting also. Where that if you're faithful over faithful, faithful say faithful, faithful. If you're faithful over the little, uh -huh. then it shows that you can be fully faithful over the many. Yeah, there is a story in the Bible. I don't know where it is. How someone wasn't faithful with money, and I think Lord said there, if you're not faithful with little and I don't know I, I I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in the Bible but so, what the Lord is saying is, this look this five here for this first man it's only a few but the Lord saying this is a few and you're faithful with it but this little this few this is all, all he can manage and he's done the best of his ability so now because you've done you work to the best of your to the best of your ability with this little few you work to the best of your ability. Um, what was I going to say? You work to the best of your ability with this few. I can trust you when, with more. When I give you more, you will continue to work with the best of your ability. Because you're faithful with a few, you're going to be faithful. It shows me the beginning, you're faithful with a few. I can, the beginning, the beginning and the end. What's the end? So, last point. You have the beginning and the end. The Lord saying, the end from the beginning, you're faithful here, faithful. over a few. That means you're going to be faithful. Contrast, complain contrast. You're going to be faithful with many at the end. That's what he's doing in verse, is it 21 or 20? Yeah, 21. So we see the end from the beginning. We see compare and contrast. Faithful with a few. Comparison, faithful. You're going to be faithful here. You're going to be faithful here. With a few here, we contrasted many, little, many. You start both faithful, beginning and the end. Luke 16, 10, the next day. That's what Magda's thinking, I think. Peter is faithful and that which is least is faithful also in Mark. Oh, so Magda's got talk, maybe talking about verse Luke 16, 10. Which is another parable. Which is another parable. Yeah. So we'll close there. So, um... Is that okay so far? Is it okay to end it there? With what we have so far. And we continue next week. So I'll summarize. So we have a man. He's going on a far, he's going to a far country. So before he travels, he gives, he has some servants. He has three servants and he, just, he, he gives some goods or talents or some money to these servants. He gives them according to their ability. And then he gives them any goals along the journey. And these men are, are expected to do something with these, with these talents. So the first two men, they work to the best of their ability and they trade, they bring in a profit. But the third man, he doesn't, he decides to hide the money into the ground. So he doesn't bring in any profit. So um, where we've got to so far is 
verse 20 and 21, where this man comes back now after a long time. So this could have been a period of time of doubling this money. It could have been, a, I don't know how long, but he comes back and he says that this man, this man was faithful. He's done all according to his ability. And then because of what he done, what he demonstrated, the work that he demonstrated, um, the Lord was able to predict. The Lord was able to know that, okay, because you was faithful with this few that I gave you, you passed this test. I know in the end, my servant, you're going to be faithful over many. So that's where we are so far. And uh, with that, shall we close? Dear Father, we thank you for this study that we've had this evening about the talents. Help us to reflect on what we're learning. Help us to see more in these words. I mean, many of us may be quite familiar with this parable or think we are. We pray that you would help us to see it with fresh glasses and um, make right application of these words, perhaps to our time eventually. Help us, Lord, as we study to, to really use the principles you have given us and to be experts at using these techniques to interrogate your word that we might be faithful in that which is least, that you may entrust us with a bigger work to do. We thank you uh, for this Sabbath and we pray now that you would give us a blessing, each one of us, restore and refresh us this Sabbath day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.